McDonald's has pasta dinners. Lots of spaghetti with delicious meatballs. Fast food items have the ability to become major hits, like the Big Mac or the Baconator. However, sometimes the choices fast food restaurants make are more flopper than whopper. Where did you get that? The clown gave it to me. Here are some of those very epic fails. The 10 biggest fast food failures of all time. Long John Silver's Big Catch Meal. Welcome aboard the ship of lost souls. This seafood monstrosity was added to the Long John Silver's menu in 2013. It contained a 7.5 ounce piece of haddock served with a pile of onion rings and a side of hush puppies. Long John Silver's described the meal as the largest fish we have ever offered and claimed it was a game changer. The Big Catch meal was launched in May and was discontinued by August of that same year due to a significant backlash. It turns out that Long John Silver's was also serving up a shockingly unhealthy amount of calories and fat. The Big Catch meal contained more trans fats than the average person should eat in two weeks. Much, much too greasy! Even the smell of it makes me feel physically sick! A lot of this was attributed to the fact that these items were cooked up in a big vat of partially hydrogenated frying oil. By the end of 2013, Long John Silvers agreed to look into new oil for their fryers that would replace hydrogenated oil in their restaurants. This meal was actually panned as the worst restaurant meal in America by the Center for Science in the Public Interest. Well, that's hardly the image we want for Long John Silvers. Pizza Hut's Gourmet Rebrand. That's a gourmet cooking for you. <laughs> pizza Hut is basically known for serving greasy, cheesy pizza. But in 2014, after declining sales, they decided they wanted to appeal to foodie millennials and updated their menu to include new artisan options. They dubbed this rebrand Flavor of Now. Some of these artisan toppings included honey sriracha sauce, Peruvian cherry peppers, and Asiago crust. The the company even reached out to some of the more trendy food trucks in New York City to help suggest menu flavors and items that would appeal to the hip foodies out there. Expecting someone with some sort of vehicle, but not this. However, at the end of May 2014, the CEO of Pizza Hut's parent company, Yum Brands Incorporated, admitted at a conference in New York City that the rebrand was not working. That's a terrible call. What was once referred to as the biggest rebrand in the company's history was now the biggest flop oh. they'd seen, at least in a long time. It turns out that they neglected one major thing. Their target audience just wanted cheap, greasy pizza. Within a year, Pizza Hut ended up making a complete reversal back to their original menu. McDonald's Pizza. McDonald's has lots of stuff for dinner, like new family-sized pizzas. With the rise of pizza chains at this time, the company decided decided it wanted to tap into this corner of the dinner food market and introduced their own pizza. By the early 1990s, McDonald's implemented it in a portion of their Canadian and American locations. Pizza time. However, there were a lot of complications that came with this decision. First, there was an equipment issue. The McDonald's pizza required a new oven to cook, which was designed to quickly cook pizza dough from frozen within six minutes. Mm, this is good. Yeah. It meant that every single restaurant location would have to obtain a new oven and find room for it in their kitchen. Next, there was a drive through issue. The boxes designed for the pizza didn't fit through the window, which meant that they had to be expanded. That called for more renovations. The pizza also took a total of 11 minutes to cook and prepare, which is way too long to keep up with drive through times. People frequently had to pull over and wait a long time for their pizzas. Not only was this a flaw, but it angered many popular pizza chains and prompted them to create smear campaign style ads against McDonald's. That was like watching <laughs> Ronald McDonald eat a cheeseburger off the grimace. <laughs> I'm serious. Burger King's Halloween Whopper. Mmm, juicy. Flavorful with just a hint of. In 2015, Burger King was consumed by the Halloween spirit. It resulted in the Halloween Whopper being added to the menu. It was your average Whopper, but it was served on a spooky black bun. To achieve the dark hue, the buns were infused with A1 steak sauce. The burger itself also came in a cute mummy themed wrapper as an added bonus. 
It turns out that the burger was more nightmare-inducing than anticipated. Hey, welcome to my world! Customers began to report that the Black Whopper was turning their poop green. And not just any green, neon green. The reason for this was the dye in the sauce. However, according to some nutritionists, a typical serving of A1 steak sauce doesn't contain enough dye to have this effect. The consensus was that Burger King was clearly using a concentrated version in their buns. Now, the green poop wasn't really a health hazard, it just came as more of a shock to people who were not mentally prepared for the experience. Holy fuck. Domino's Oreo Dessert Pizza. Aren't cookies the best? 2007 was an interesting year. And we are calling it iPhone. For $3.99, you could order a giant pizza-sized cookie from Domino's. It was served as an addition with any purchase. The Oreo dessert pizza consisted of a warm, giant chocolate chip cookie slathered in Oreos and super sweet, sticky vanilla syrup. Most people agreed that this concoction was way too sweet and also too chewy. According to some reviews, the cookie portion was also pretty bland. It's that signature creamy filling that we really care about, so when you take it out of the equation, it's not the same. Oh, okay. Overall, it was unappealing and didn't last very long on the menu. Doesn't feel like there's much love in Domino's Pizza. While Domino's has developed a substantial reputation for affordable pizza delivery over the years, it has never really been known for its desserts. It seems as though they've taken the hint. After trying to launch other types of dessert pizzas over the years, the company has seemingly decided to stick with brownies, cinestics, and lava cake for the time being. Eat a pizza once in a while! McDonald's Spaghetti McDonald's new pasta dinners with your favorite meatballs. In the 1970s, McDonald's decided to develop Mick Spaghetti. The dish was long spaghetti noodles covered in marinara sauce, topped with shredded cheese, and served in a cardboard container. In the late 1980s and early 1990s, McDonald's decided to give it another try. They launched Mick Spaghetti in some locations across the United States, mostly the South. Since when don't you like spaghetti and meatballs? Huh? This time, they tried a few varieties, including lasagna and fettuccine alfredo. These products were launched in those locations to be tested over the course of a year. But like the McPizza, people do not go to McDonald's for Italian food. This item was taken off the menu pretty quickly. Still, McDonald's did try to bring back their McSpaghetti in other locations around the world. You can try it yourself, but you have to go to the Philippines to get it. Lasagna. Lasagna, what the hell's the matter with you? Burger King's Satis Fries. It's time to get satisfied. In 2013, Burger King decided they needed to cater to a more health conscious audience in North America and decided that the best way to do this was to release healthier fries. Mmm! Is this organic? The Burger King Satis Fries were made with a type of batter that was designed to absorb less of the frying oil. This way, they wouldn't contain as much fat as regular fries. The results were fries that were only 4 grams less in fat than the regular fries and still contained 270 calories in a small serving, only about 70 calories less than regular fries. According to some reports, many customers started calling them saddest fries. Let's face it, when you're hungry for french fries, you don't care about calorie content. I want high cholesterol. I want to eat bacon and butter and buckets of cheese, okay? Because you know you're not making a healthy choice to begin with. For example, even though McDonald's has released a lot of healthier options, their biggest sellers are still french fries and burgers. Burger King's top seller is still the Whopper. Within a year, Burger King started discontinuing the saddest fries from their menu Garbage day! and went back to the good old greasy fries people know and love. Dairy Queen's Breeze. Come on. I'll treat you to a Dairy Queen. Just like Burger King, Dairy Queen also decided to try to appeal to more health-conscious customers. In 1990, Dairy Queen launched The Breeze. It was basically a blizzard made from frozen yogurt instead of ice cream. It lasted about a decade before the company finally pulled the plug and discontinued it. Not like this. 
The problem was that it just didn't sell. Some employees actually stated that the frozen yogurt supply in the store would often go bad or expire before they could sell any of it. One of the issues could be that a frozen yogurt-based blizzard still isn't actually healthy, especially when you mix in a bunch of candies and chocolates that completely defeat the purpose of a healthier base. It was technically lower in calories than a regular blizzard, but still had a ton of them when the mix-ins were added. Or perhaps the problem is that Dairy Queen was too early in their thinking. I really want to sort of make a healthy, low-fat or non-fat. Now, frozen yogurt chains are incredibly popular, and people enjoy turning to this alternative as a healthier way to enjoy a cool dessert. C can I come too? Robbie, I only have enough money for me and Joe. <laughs> Taco Bell's Seafood Salad. Seafood. During the 1980s, the restaurant chain best associated with stoners and post-bar runs decided to try to invent a healthy seafood item to compete with the successful filet of fish at McDonald's. In this vintage commercial for the concoction, you can clearly see that they are trashing the competition by implying that ordering fish at a fast food chain isn't real fish. Ironic. <laughs> Pretty good. Coming from a chain that is constantly under scrutiny for the quality of its beef. Now, the more logical solution to compete with the seafood market would have just been to introduce fish tacos. However, Taco Bell decided they were going to do something completely different and decided on a salad instead. Ron, would you like some salad? <laughs> Since I am not a rabbit, no, I do not. The Taco Bell seafood salad contained a mixture of typical salad vegetables topped with shrimp, whitefish, and snow crab. Extra toppings also included cheese and olives. And in Taco Bell style, the whole thing was served inside an edible taco shell bowl. Does anyone really want seafood when they go to Taco Bell? It turns out the answer is no, because this item was discontinued. Don't go! Wendy's Super Bar. You eat all that, I won't be responsible. When you think of a salad bar and buffet-style experience, you don't typically think about Wendy's. But back in the 80s and 90s, they gave it a go with their Super Bar. Basically, this was a big self-serve buffet bar that featured salads, fruit, Mexican food, and pasta. The pasta section included two types of pasta with sauce options and garlic bread made from hamburger buns. In the Mexican section were nachos, refried beans, and a build-your-own taco bar. Then, dessert was a choice between chocolate or vanilla pudding. The Super Bar cost about $2.99 per person, about $5.40 today after inflation, which, if you ask us, is a steal. And a lot of other people thought so, too. In fact, so many people loved the idea that Wendy's really couldn't keep up with running a buffet and still preparing their regular orders. They now had to do their usual job with the added responsibilities of cleaning, re stocking and preparing foods for the super bar. Not to mention, it's probably not very profitable to be charging that little when you know that people are going back for as many helpings as they can. Face deep and abusing that free refill policy. By 1998, the Super Bar was discontinued, although some locations still carried it until 2006. Is this the gentleman? The buffet. Help yourself to seconds and tap that screen for our next great video. New to our channel and want to join our notification squad? It's easy. After you bang that subscribe button, just ring that bell.